Although I love the solitude of landscape photography, sometimes there's nothing better than spending quality time in the outdoors with a few friends, having fun and exploring some new locations. So when my friends from the Photography Pubcast got in touch to say they'd be in Glencoe for the weekend, I jumped at the chance to spend a few days with them in one of the most dramatic landscapes that the UK has to offer. So this weekend I've come down to Glencoe and I'm actually here with some friends who you might recognise, it's the guys from the pubcast, so I'm here with Jamie, Gary, Darren and David. And, um, and we're down here at Glencoe and we've actually on our first evening, um, we're staying in a campsite actually in Glencoe, but our first evening we've decided to come down here to I guess what is a bit of a honeypot location and it's the, the waterfall at, at Glencoe which is not actually a location I've been to before. I mean, I've only been to Glencoe once before for photography, and to be honest, I actually avoided this location just because it's so well shot. But we thought we'd start off here, I guess, as a kind of easy starting point, as it were. And um, I think, I was just having a chat with David just now, and we both agreed that actually a lot of the shots that you, you see here are all of the waterfall, but they really don't show off the grandeur of this mountain. I guess a lot of the time you have a wide angle lens, um, to try and capture that waterfall in the foreground um, and you kind of lose some of the grandeur of the actual mountain but the Bucolette of Moor which is this big pinnacle here is actually one of the most impressive mountains in Scotland it's very well photographed it's certainly one of the most photographed mountains in Scotland but with good reason because it is just such an impressive peak um, but we're going to have a little walk around um, here um, to be honest, the water levels here are quite low today. There's not been much rain. It's been very dry the last few days. We're actually forecast to have a lot of rain on Saturday, tomorrow. So it might be that if we come back here on Sunday, the water levels might be a little bit better. But I'll take a wander around and see if there's any shots to take. So I always find it just a little bit difficult when you're having somewhere that's so well photographed to try and find something a little bit more unique and um, I decided what I'm going to do is I've gone for a, a portrait orientation on this, this shot which has got more of a, the lower part of the waterfall which to be honest I've not seen a huge number of photos which have included this part of the waterfall in it before. That's what I've gone for. I'm struggling a little bit with um, exposure to be honest. When I'm photographing waterfalls what I like to do is aim for about a quarter of a second. That way the water doesn't get too blurred out. Well, with, without my six stop filter, um, I'm looking at more of uh, one fifteenth of a second, which isn't quite slow enough for me. And then with the six stop filter, even if I'm pushing the ISO up to 400, I'm still getting, um, I'm still taking shots that are a second long. So exposure's not quite to my liking at the moment. Um, I could really do with a much weaker filter than a six stop, something like a two stop or a one stop, but I've only got a six stop and a 10 stop. So it's one of those rare occasions when I'm finding I don't actually currently have a filter that I need to do the job, but um, even so, I've, I've taken a couple of images. I'm quite happy with, with how they've turned out. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep looking and see if I can find anything else to post well. I have actually had a, a little bit of a look at the kind of standard shot which everyone takes at this particular lo location and actually both Gary and I were talking about how we think actually it might be nice to get something just a little bit different and really try and focus on that mountain so um, we've just popped slightly further up the river and we've got some really nice boulders down here so I'm going to take a wander around and see if there's some nice compositions to be had. So I'm just having to work fairly quickly at the moment before this rain comes in and hits me. We've had a few spatters so far, but it's not not been heavy. Um, but actually I found this quite a nice little spot here where there's just a little bit of water in the foreground and 
a mountain in the background and there's one big boulder here which is really sitting in my foreground and I think this works fairly well. Um, what I've done is I've got the six stop filter on there just to take out any movement on the top of this water. And I've got the polarizer on there as well just to cut out that glare and hopefully we'll be able to see some of these, these rocks underneath the surface of the water. Um, but I've had to bracket the shots actually, um, although it doesn't look like it, there is actually quite a bit of dynamic range in the scene and for me to have to bracket on the R5 usually means that um, there's quite a bit of dynamic range to have to deal with. Um, but I am having to bracket this shot just to get that, that sky in. The sky looks probably on this camera quite sort of blank and grey, but in reality there's quite a lot of detail in there and I really want to make sure I capture that detail because it could look quite foreboding. Um, in the image and I'm hoping I'm going to be able to really bring that out in, in the final image. So we were just driving along um, the valley actually back in the direction of the campsite and um, there's some absolutely gorgeous light happening so we decided to pull over and we've all got out, you can probably see the other guys up there behind me, I'm going to go and join them in a minute. Um, but I just whacked the 200mm lens onto the camera really quickly and I just fired off actually initially just a few handheld shots just to try and catch the light whilst it was good and then I've got the tripod out and there's just a little bit of light hitting the three sisters down there further up the valley. So it's looking absolutely gorgeous. So I've taken a few images and I think probably what I'll do now is I'll switch back to the 24 to 105 because there's this other mountain here in the foreground with a 200mm lens. I can't really photograph that so I'm going to go for the slightly wider angle lens and see if I can get some images of that as well. So I think we probably had the last of the light there, we just sort of stuck it out but we're getting a bit cold now and I think the, uh, the light's disappearing behind the mountain, or the sun's disappearing behind the mountain now so I don't know if we're going to get any better light than we've already had so I think we're probably going to call it a day here. I think we've got a few shots from today which not too bad, um, yeah we'll see. Anyway thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.
so I said, just, just between us four, you should have a little bet. Is this going to be Sam's first and last? Do you, when he leaves us, do you think he'll go, I ain't never going back with him? Yeah. That is an absolute.